Welcome to the debut issue of Canola Quick Bites podcast, brought to you by the U.S. Canola Association, December 2020. Capitol Hill. In this month's blog, U.S. Canola Association policy expert Tom Hance discusses 2020 election results. States will certify votes by December 8th, the Electoral College on December 14th, and Congress on January 6th, which will confirm Joe Biden's victory. Democrats will still hold the House, even though Republicans were able to flip several seats. The Senate majority will be decided in the Georgia runoff election on January 5th. In the weeks ahead, the new Secretary of Agriculture will be nominated, and House Democrats and Republicans will select a new chair and ranking member of the House Agriculture Committee. Senators John Boozman, Republican from Arkansas, and Debbie Stabenow, a Democrat from Michigan, await the results of the Georgia runoff to know which of them will be chair and ranking member of the Senate Committee on Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is still accepting applications for the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program 2, otherwise known as CFAP 2, through December 11th. CFAP 2 will provide up to $14 billion in direct support for producers of eligible commodities. Canola is included under the flat rate payment category. Since agriculture risk coverage and price loss coverage have been in place, canola base acres have been paid $403.7 million, or $273.51 per acre, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Farm Service Agency. The average payment for canola increased to $61.51 per base acre for the 2019 crop year, up $10 from 2018. Agronomy. Canola acreage is up in Washington, Oregon, Montana, and Idaho. Numbers from the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Farm Service Agency show increases ranging from 4% in Oregon to 24% in Washington. Totals show roughly 275,000 acres for the four states. Check out maps on the Pacific Northwest Canola Association website at pnwcanola.org for county-by-county acreage. A new video by the Canola... Pacific Northwest Canola Association called Building Soil Health with Canola Production features growers in eastern Washington. You may recognize some of the association's board and grower members in it. Check out the trailer on YouTube or at pnwcanola.org. Nutrition. Feed your family right this holiday season by cooking with canola oil. The nutrition and cooking section of the U.S. Canola Association website at uscanola.org. Dot com details qualified health claims about canola oil, including that it may help reduce the risk of heart disease. The Hindustan Times of India touts the use of canola oil for festival foods to combat the health risk of consuming fried foods. This is largely due to canola oil's high percentage of good fats and high smoke point, making it the perfect substitute. Other country news. Virtual Canola Week, hosted by the Canola Council of Canada, December 1st through 3rd, will be all about research and production. Topics will include the state of the industry, cutting-edge technologies, agronomic issues, and canola fertility. The Canola Council of Canada invites U.S. Canola Association members to join a canola forum to discuss North American supply, global demand, and programming for canola utilization and market access. The meeting will be in January 2021. Interested participants should contact Vice President of Public Affairs Brian Ennis at nsb at canolacouncil.org. Canola has been gaining ground as a Canadian biofuel during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is largely due to demand for canola oil and restaurants decreasing. Ian Thompson, President of Advanced Biofuels Canada, believes the future of canola oil and biodiesel and renewable diesel production is looking bright in Canada. Latest industry news. CropLife International signed an agreement with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations to strengthen relations and augment sustainable food systems. CropLife believes, quote, the future of agriculture depends on new technology and tailor-made innovations that support the digitalization and advancement of the sector, unquote. This partnership promises to promulgate such advancements. Sustainable packaging producer Danimer Scientific is using canola oil to produce bioplastic certified as marine degradable, the highest standard of biodegradability. The bioplastic, called Nodex PHA, is created by bacteria that eat canola oil, converting it into PHA. Danimer will supply Bacardi with 100% bioplastic bottles for all of its products by 2023. Nestle and PepsiCo are other partners. 
Danimer's bioplastic will be used to make straws, food and beverage containers, flexible packaging, and agricultural and medical applications. The Minnesota Canola Council's Canola Symposium will be virtual this year on December 3rd. It will cover new innovations in the canola industry, COVID-19's potential impact on canola markets, and how election results may influence agricultural policy. Registration is online at mncanola.org. On December 8th, the Northern Canola Growers Association will host its 23rd annual Canola Expo online. Jim Weisemeyer of Pro Farmer will headline it. Leslie Kelly of High Heels and Canola Fields will address handling stress, and Vin Chapara will discuss club root in canola. Go to northerncanola.com for details. About the U.S. Canola Association. The USDA held its autumn board meeting virtually November 5th and 6th, covering an election recap, lame duck agenda, and 2021 outlook, as well as policy updates related to CFAP2, fiscal year 2021 appropriations, renewable diesel, trade, crop protection, biotechnology, and conservation programs, including a new pollinator habitat enhancement for canola. The board approved a slightly revised mission statement and updated communication strategy focused on increasing U.S. canola production. The new mission is to, quote, increase domestic canola production to meet growing demand for healthy oil, meal, and protein by promoting policies and conditions favorable to growing, marketing, processing, and using U.S. canola, unquote. The USDA's spring board and annual membership meeting will be March 9th through 11th, 2021 in Washington, D.C., pending COVID-19 management. Listen to Canola Quick Bites for a change. That's right, listen. The USDA is debuting this e-newsletter in audio form as of this issue based on farmer demand. Tune in the first day of each month via our YouTube channel or at uscanola.com. USDA Treasurer Mindy Whittle, Oilseeds Industry Affairs Lead at Bayer U.S. Crop Science, will retire on December 4th. She well served the USDA board for 10 plus years and Monsanto Bear for 23 years. My career, she said, has been one of twists, turns, and changes, but the one constant has been the wonderful people I have always been fortunate to work with, especially with all of you on the canola board, she wrote. Together, we tackled some big challenges through the years, but we always did it with integrity and a lot of laughs. She expressed gratitude for being able to work with, quote, folks who are dedicated to agriculture and who work tirelessly on behalf of farmers, unquote. The USDA sends heartfelt thanks and best wishes to Mindy. Get social with the USDA on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Want to promote your products or services to canola producers and industry members? Visit the USDA advertising pages to find specs, deadlines, and rates to advertise in this monthly e-newsletter or on uscanola.com.